all right wish you all a very good evening now in this particular video we would be basically discussing about the relationship between group theory and the splitting of d orbitals right now there's a very fascinating relationship between in particular the character table and the splitting pattern of d orbitals in various geometries right now uh, how do we uh, determine what kind of splitting will happen in different kinds of geometries you can see over here i've taken a uh, table where you know for square planar geometry you have different splitting of d orbitals for different geometries you will have different uh, splitting of the d orbitals right so why that happens because of different uh, you know interact different ways of interaction of different uh, lobes of the orbitals with the ligands right so the splitting of the d orbitals how do we determine it that i will be making in the next video right right after this video i'll be making another video where i'll be talking about how you can determine the splitting pattern of the d orbitals right but then there are certain cases where we face difficulties all right for example if i talk about if you look at over here at the square planar geometry in square planar geometry you have four different energy levels one is x square y square one is xy one is dz square and then one is xy and yz so you have four different d orbital energy levels right now if i talk about uh, your um, for example trigonal bipyramidal or even trigonal planar right in those cases you can see there are only three different energy levels right one two and three right there are three different energy levels so how do we determine in what cases there will be uh, you know three different energy levels in what cases there will be four different energy levels how do we determine that particularly like over here and even here as well you will see that x xy and x square y square both these orbitals have equal energy so how do we determine that that we can use with the help of group theory for example i'll tell you like if you have a trigonal planar geometry right you have a metal over here or any um, you know central atom over here and let's say this is ligand l this is another ligand and this is another ligand right so if i draw the x and y axis let's say this is my x axis over here all right and let's say this is my y, y axis which is where the ligand exactly lies right so if i talk about your x square y square orbital the x square y square orbital will be lying on the axis right your x square y square orbital will be lying on the axis and the x y orbital will be lying in between the axis right it will be lying in between the axis so basically one of the orbitals is directly uh, is directly you can say oriented towards the ligand and the dxy and the dxy orbital are slightly oriented towards the ligand right dxy will be somewhere over here like this right it would not be directly in the path of the ligand but somewhere in the path of the ligand right so how do we determine whether they will be of equal energy or not uh, that there is a shortcut trick also that you can remember which i'll be talking about in the next video but over here like i said i wanted to discuss the relationship with the group theory right and uh, otherwise you can also mug it up a lot of students do that but there are so many different geometries that will be very difficult for you to mug up all of them right so there is a way that you can uh, know it through group theory and possibly in the future there might be a, such a question where they relate group theory with your d orbital splitting right now if you look if i take an example of a trigonal planar molecule um let's say i take the example of bf3 so if you look at the bf3 and you try to calculate its point group if you uh, look into the bf3 molecule um and if you calculate its point group it comes out to be d3h right the point group of your bf3 molecule which is trigonal planar comes out to be d3h now if you look at the character table of d3h uh, you will notice something very peculiar over here the thing that you will notice is that x square y square and xy if you look into the quadratic functions if you look into the column of quadratic functions you will see that x square y square and xy are belonging to the same molecular symbol that means they have the same symmetry and that is why they are they are degenerate in the case of d3h point group so whatever geometry will have a d3h point group over there x square y square and xy will be degenerate similarly your xz and yz are degenerate they are having this but they are belonging to this particular molecular symbol and similarly in this case um, your uh, where where did, where did it go yeah so your z square right your z z square basically belongs to this particular a molecular symbol so it this will have one energy th these two will have uh, degenerate energies and then these two also will have degenerate energies so this is one way that you can do that so d3h point group is for trigonal planar molecules right for trigonal planar and even for your um, trigonal uh, bipyramidal also we have the same d3h point group right that is why if you go to the previous slide over here you can see that for the trigonal bipyramidal we also have xy and x square y square of equal energy right now let's move forward um let's take another example which point which molecule belongs to d4d point group right now if you look at the d4d point group over here we have square anti prismatic geometry 
right d4d point group is of square antiprismatic geometry so let's say in the exam they ask you the square antiprismatic geometry now this is a 3d structure now if you see this structure uh, these four ligands are basically you can see that they are, they are symmetric so if you rotate if you pass a axis if you pass a axis through like on from the top of the molecule like this what you'll observe is that you can rotate it uh, by 90 degree or by a c4 axis right you can rotate it by a c4 axis and it also has a c2 axis of symmetry so basically i hope you know the basics of group theory so this will have a d4 d point group right why not d4h because this is our principal axis right this this over here in the z direction is our principal axis right uh, but the problem is that you cannot bisect this molecule into half right it the the, the plane of symmetry is not uh, in between the molecule like the plane of symmetry is not over here because below this ligand we don't have another ligand right over here also you can see if i cut it through this below the ligand 4 i don't have another ligand 4 right so i do not have this kind of symmetry present in the molecule on the other hand if i if i take a axis which cuts through this like this okay then you can see that this ligand over here will be reflected over here and this ligand over here will be uh, reflected on the back and this one over here will be reflected over here basically it will have a a uh, plane of symmetry which will be parallel to the principal axis and that is why we say it has a d4d point group right now if you look at the uh, character table of a d4d point group uh, over here what you'll observe is that again the same thing in the d4d point group as well your x square y square and xy belong to one particular molecular symbol so they are going to be degenerate your xz yz are going to be degenerate and your z square is also going to be degenerate right so this is one way you can uh, you know using the character table you can find out the geometries of the molecule now how can you attempt such questions basically uh, there has not been asked there like till now there has not been any question where they have related character table and the um, point group but for example this question was there in trigonal prismatic ligand field the most stabilized the orbital is which one right now how we can how we can uh, solve such questions is that for example you do not know the splitting of the d orbitals right you're not aware of the splitting of the d orbitals now what you can do is that you can uh, basically um, uh, what, do, what do i say like if you to calculate the point group of this uh, molecule it comes out to be d 3 h right how come because over here if you pass an axis on top of this molecule like this like if you pass an axis on the top of the molecule like this and rotate it by um, 120 degree or c3 axis you will observe the same ligand right you'll observe the same molecule and if you take this as the plane of symmetry right then this ligand will be reflected over here and this ligand will be reflected over here and this ligand will be reflected over here so it has a uh, plane of symmetry which is perpendicular to the principal axis so that is why it has a d3h point group now for d3h point group you remember that dxy and x square y square are having the same kind of um, energy level then um, your dxz and dyz have the same energy level and then dz square has the another energy level now the question says in trigonal prismatic ligand field the most stabilized d orbital is let's say you don't have any clue about which one will, will be the most stabilized d orbital though in like i said in the coming video you will have an idea which is the most stabilized d orbital but anyway let's say you don't have any idea now how do you, how can you do that is see um, now you know that they both are of equal energy so if it is the most stabilized the orbital then they should have given an option where x y and x square y square both are given right but in this case you would see that only neither is x z y z given in the, any of the options like both of them should be given right because both of them are degenerate so neither is this given neither is this given so the only plausible answer is that it should be d z square so if you know about the character tables or at least you know about the quadratic functions of the character tables through the, through that particular um, you know way also you can determine the answer right so anyway like it is not something that would be would be of immediate importance but i thought this is a very important concept because in the future the examiners can test that right because they have been testing such questions where they give you the character table and they ask you some uh, you know some anomalous question related to that particular character table so this could be also one of the questions that which two orbitals are degenerate for this particular character table so from there you can determine that whichever will be having the same molecular symbols under the quadratic function column they are basically going to be degenerate right so group theory is actually a very important uh, uh, you can say um, puzzle of uh, chemistry which basically tries to glue up all the different concepts right from group the from the character table you can know so many things about different functionalities right 
so it's a very interesting um, aspect and if you are if you are interested in group, group theory and how it relates to chemistry in general there is a very good book called chemical applications of group theory right chemical applications of um, group theory and it is basically um, written by f a cotton so you can go through that book and in the next video i'll explain you how you can determine that what kind of orbitals will be uh, you know or what will be the symmetry or the energy levels of the orbitals in different molecular geometries there is a way that we can know and i would be definitely highlighting that in the next video so anyway i hope you found this video useful if you did please give this video a big thumbs up and also do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel right thank you so much for watching i'll see you very soon in the next video hey guys so i am a verified educator on an academy and along with that i am also available on the unacademy plus platform where i am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the unacademy plus platform using my referral code that is sethi sethi and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the unacademy for that all you need to do is go to the unacademy website or download the unacademy learning app and search my name over there that is a ct once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the unacademy platform all right now let's begin with the video